Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> it is Sunday morning, and so we gather. We gather as the people of God in the world, spread out but one, connected through the Spirit of God to each other. Through Jesus Christ, we worship as one this morning. Thank you for being with us, for joining us, for coming alongside of us as we proclaim Jesus Christ crucified and risen this morning. The Holy Spirit present in the world, pervading us, invading us, calling us into paths of righteousness together. <clears throat> if you're joining us uh, on, our, on our website, you can find our Sunday school service. Our, 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 our Sunday school video is right below our live stream. If you're joining us on our Facebook, I'd invite you to go to canyonhillspc.org and open that Sunday school video. If you happen to have kids, uh, that'll keep them entertained, keep them learning about, uh, about the gospel as well uh, in a way that's age-appropriate. Um, today we also celebrate communion. So uh, if you have your bagel and coffee, uh, that is the bread and blood of Christ today. Um, take communion with us using whatever elements you have, uh, wine or juice or bread or something. Um, but participate in communion with us uh, later as we say those words. Also, uh, you're invited to talk during church, please uh, post in the chats, either on Facebook or on our website. We have e-liturgists, people who are, are helping and, and curating the worship experience. They would love to interact with you, to say hello, to, to, to write down your prayer requests so we can go to God uh, with the, the reflections of our hearts and, and our needs of this community. So please, comment, engage, join with us in communion, join with us in singing, do what you would to be a part of the body of Christ and to make that feel real to all of us this morning uh, as we continue in isolation, as we continue uh, connecting through this miracle of the internet to one another. So please, join us in worship. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you reign. 
God you reign Forever and ever God you reign God you reign God you reign Forever and ever God you reign Join us as we sing Chain Breaker. <clears throat> if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life well, There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost well, He's a way maker If you need freedom to save it He's a prison shaking savior If you got change He's a chain breaker We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We've all run to things we know just ain't right When there's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom Or saving He's a prison shaking savior He got chains He's a chain breaker If you can leave it If you receive it if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain. Well, he's a pain taker If you feel lost well, He's a way maker If you need freedom To save him He's a prison shaking savior You got chain He's a chain breaker If you got pain well, He's a pain taker If you feel lost well, he's a way maker. If you need freedom for saving, well, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. If you need freedom for saving, well, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Thanks to our gifted musicians. You bring us such joy and peace each Sunday and always. Now let us join together in our prayer of preparation. Spirit of the living God, dwell with us. Dwell with us in this world, in our nation, our homes, and in our hearts. Remind us that in the Holy Spirit, we are all one. That the distance and differences that separate us cannot keep us apart in spirit. Set us free from the isolation that surrounds us in our world and felt literally and figuratively by all of us. Unite us with God 
as you would graft a new branch into a healthy tree. Our God is the vine and we are the branches. Let us bear fruit. As we are one with God, we are called to be one with each other. One with each other, one with God, all creation unified in the Holy Spirit and the hope of redemption. Forgive the ways our feet stray from the path of peace, mercy, humility, and justice. Let the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control be bountiful in our lives. God's forgiveness stretches from everlasting to everlasting. His grace is enough for us today. May God's spirit increase in us day by day. Amen. Okay, uh, can you tell me something that you're proud of? Um, I'd say both my school and dance accomplishments um, with all the APs that I've been taking and the grades as well as um, just the studio life and the awards I've gotten with dance as well. Um, um, kind of how much I've grown over the past four years um, to me personally because I was like, if you guys knew me like going into like eighth grade, going into my freshman year, I was like this super like immature kid who like didn't really like just do anything. He kind of just didn't care about nothing, just went along with everything. And like over the years, I kind of like realized that I'm going to have to start like, you know, putting out toward more effort towards things and kind of just changing stuff around. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I would say that I'm most proud of my musical accomplishments. Uh, I've been learning a lot over the past couple of years about what I like in music, how to make the music, and how to play use the instruments that I play to make good music. So I would say I'm most proud of my growth in that sector. Uh, I'm proud of the way that I treat others and the way that I make others happy and laugh and like try to really bring like God's joy like out of myself and like give it to others and like make them happy and like feel good. I'm proud of the accomplishments I've made throughout high school. I really think I've grown a lot as an individual with just experiences. Like I've been in ASB for four years, so I think being in that has really helped me become the person I am today. If you had no restrictions, uh, how would you spend your time? If I had no restrictions, I would spend a lot of time with my friends and we would go out and hang out all day. And then um, I'd spend the rest of my time making music with them. I think I would travel all over the world. I'd like to do that a lot. If I had no restrictions on my time, I think half of my time I'd be out fishing, like on a boat, you know, because I love to do that, catch me some nice tuna or some yelltail or something. And then the other half I'd spend with the people that I love, you know, and maybe even take those people that I love out on the fishing trip with me. I think I would spend my time traveling because I think it's really interesting how everyone has different cultures and how their cultures kind of make them themselves. So I think just traveling and meeting new people and exploring new things. To fill my time, I would definitely go to Hawaii, go surf in Hawaii and hang out down there and um, kind of just travel the world. That's what I love to do. I mean, I don't really have a lot of time to do that. But that's something I've always wanted to do, especially when I get older, was travel the world and go and check out different places. Um, Can you describe how you navigated um, through a time of uncertainty in your life? So in my life, like when things get uncertain, I tend to like go back to my rock and my foundation, which is, you know, my belief in Christ and my passion for the Bible. And 
I just try to like go back through my notes or like read through my devotionals and like really like get back to the basics and like what life should be all about. And like when you make it simple like that, I feel like it makes it like really easy to like work through some challenging times. You figure it out. It's a, you know, it's, this is just not how the world's meant to be. And I have, I'm never going to conform myself to a world that's not meant to be like this. I'm just going to wait till things are better. Okay. Um, I mean, school, that's a big one. I mean, there is like, because especially being at home, you don't really have a lot of motivation to do schoolwork. So, I mean, that's definitely one of them that you got to kind of overcome here. Um, okay. Um, when, so my top college was the University of Washington and I didn't get in at first and I was really bummed, but I got on the wait list. And then recently I just found out I got off the wait list. But then I was really uncertain if I still wanted to go to Oregon or if I wanted to go to UW. So I think I prayed about it a lot and that really helped me lead me to the answer going to the University of Oregon. With um, schools, both like this year deciding colleges and deciding what high school I was gonna go to, um, because I ended up going to Orange Lutheran instead of Canyon where I was supposed to go. And all my friends were going to Canyon, so that was hard for me, but I knew it was the right decision in the end. Can you tell me the story of a time where you put others or some goal that you had uh, above your own self-interests? Okay. Um, in high school, I'm involved in Link Crew, which is welcoming the new freshmen. So I spent a lot of time reaching out to them and making sure that their needs were handled or if they had any questions, they could come to me. So rather than worrying about my schedule, who I was going to hang out with, what I was going to be doing that day, I made sure I texted them and made sure they were okay with what was going on or reaching out to me or me reaching out to them. Definitely. My entire two-year relationship with a girlfriend definitely put her about, way above me, further than I should have. All my friends, uh, my buddy's going through a hard time right now. He, uh, He's got a lot of he's got a lot going on that I won't go into, but uh, yeah, no, I've been in there for the, him for the past couple of days. I'm gonna see him probably either today or the next following couple of days. But yeah, he's been going through a hard time. You gotta put some people first. Gotcha. And like I've missed um, ha like spending most of Thanksgiving break with my friends and family because I've been going on missions trips to Appalachia, Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky. So um, we rebuild their flooring, touch up their houses, spend time with the disabled there. So that's, that's one time. I mean, I, we, all, we have like a group of friends that we all kind of hang out with. And I mean, a lot of times, like we'll all have to like sacrifice doing one thing that we don't really like to do, just to kind of like kind of change things up because it's, it's kind of boring, just like going to the beach or hanging out at somebody else's house. So we'll try somebody else's like interest, I think. Uh... Probably that will be over this break when I'd like go practice like uh, my sport and I'd take a few of the, like like one of the freshmen who really wanted to learn, I'd uh, ask him to come out with me and I'd help coach him up and uh, just do the best that I could to help him out, you know? Describe to me what your concept of God or the concept of the church looks like right now. To me, it just kind of just means, not, not really blindly following, but in a way, kind of just going and believing no matter what situation, whether you're, because like right now, obviously we're not in a good time, but if you just keep going and keep believing, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the concept of God to me is just, is, is a, just a beacon of hope. Like, I'm not saying I'm the most religious person or anybody else's, but I'd say, if anything, it's something to look up to when there's nothing else to look up to. Because sometimes you've got nothing to look up to, except, you know, your mom and dad, my mom, my dad, my, my brothers. And uh, when you feel a little bit of nothing, there's always in the church and there's always God to look forward to. Well, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on with, you know, quarantine and all the riots going on. So I think it's important to connect with God during these times because everyone's feeling lonely or upset. Um, so I think just having a good relationship and, you know, praying every day, speaking to him can help us. Um, and then, you know, we're missing the whole, like, fellowship of church at this time. So I think we just really need to 
check up on those that are in our church now. It means a lot to me right now. I've been going to church and reading Bible verses every day. I have the Bible app on my phone and that's been helping me a lot with just quarantine and going into college because all of, everything that's happening has been kind of scary and I've never experienced anything like this. So kind of relying on God to help me through this tough time has been really important to me and really comforting. The concept of, well, I'll start first with God. I mean, God is, I think it's a very personal relationship between every individual. Like everyone is going to have a different meaning or like everyone's going to feel the Holy Spirit differently and the connection differently. And like my connection to God is like whenever like I sit and I'm just still like I feel his presence and just like like God to me is like the comfort that I get knowing that like there's like this world is like temporary, you know, not having any fear of death and just knowing that like there's an eternal glory waiting for me in heaven, you know, and the church to me is uh, not only a place to come together and to like make meaningful connections with other Christ Center individuals, but it's also a place where you go to reconnect yourself with God and like reinforce your connection with him, you know, and if you like don't go for a while or something like you can start to lose that connection and like I really feel like it's important to like do maintenance on like your spirituality and I really think church is really good at that. Congratulations to our graduates of the class of 2020. They are an amazing bunch. We heard from Lauren Drum, Mike Lewis, Jake Porter, Claire Bailey, Jackson Omen. Um, I got the pleasure of speaking with them uh, in a socially distanced, mask on kind of way this week um, because I've missed being with them because their words constantly inspire me. You hear them talk about their desire to spend time with the people they love, to experience new things, to rely on God in their daily life. The fact that they've overcome this adversity and still been focused on helping others, persevering, and finding hope. This new generation that is coming into adulthood has been shaped by the world that we live in during these last couple of months, and they're poised to do amazing things. So graduates, we bless you as Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church as you endeavor out into the world in all these ways. Just know that the church is there for you, that the church loves you, and that the church supports you. No matter where you go, if anything we've learned in these last couple of months is that distance means much less than we thought it did before, we will always be there to support you. And so now we turn our eyes to Scripture we turn our eyes to the word of God so we can go to our God and listen to our God and hear the wisdom of God being spoken this morning. Let's read from the, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 to chapter 4, verses 6. It says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with veiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is spirit. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced the secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of the Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, made his light to shine in our heart to give us the light of knowledge in God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. May God bless the reading and hearing and understanding of his holy word. So congratulations to our graduates. This, uh, this graduating class stands apart. 
They're not the only graduating class to graduate into a time of adversity, but the, the, the confluence of forces that have come together right now in this moment uh, are still pretty mind-boggling. So my hope is that this morning is as you watch from wherever you might be, that, uh, that you graduates are blessed and encouraged, and that uh, as Paul affirms um, to another group of Christians, Meyer University, that neither life nor death nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God. This was true back then, and it's true now, that through Jesus Christ and the body of the church in the world, we will be with you no matter where the storms of life occur. Um, Nothing can stop God from loving you, and nothing can stop the church from loving you. And so this morning I was thinking about what I could teach, what I could give you, what wisdom I could pass on. And the verse that popped into my mind was uh, the last one of our, our, our thing this morning. Let, the light sh- let light shine out of darkness. And God who made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. And this might seem like a a weird verse when there are others that are so much easier to apply to graduation. You know, cliches like, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Uh, but, But here's the deal, graduating into a divisive environment with, with political unrest and plague, um, it doesn't seem very meaningful to simply say God will prosper you. It doesn't seem like anything more than a cliche. Because if we're being taught anything, um, is that prospering doesn't always look how we think it should look. And uh, on the surface, this world doesn't look a lot like prosperity. So instead today, I want us to consider the face of Christ. And I want to ask you, and all the body of Christ that is gathered here this morning, um, through the work of, of, of this thing, have we seen the Savior's face? Have we seen the Savior's face? What do you mean by that, Matt? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> are, we, are we people who understand what God is reflecting into the world? You see, this image of the veil comes from Moses in Exodus chapter 34, where he goes and he communes with God directly. And after God instructs him, he walks out of the tent. Uh, and and the, the, the Bible says this, um, his face had become radiant while he spoke with the Lord. And they were afraid to come near him, they meaning the people of Israel. They were afraid to come near him because of what he was reflecting into the world. The, the experience of being in God's presence made Moses exude this terrible, terrifying radiance. So that the people, when they looked on his face, were terrified. The mere afterglow of God's glory was something that the people of God could not tolerate. So Moses had to wear a veil to shield them from it. In the time of Jesus, this veil, this symbol of the veil, uh, was found in the temple Where God was seated in the holiest of holies, there was a veil, a curtain, that separated the presence of God, as the people understood it, from the place where you would worship. This veil protected the people from the fearful and terrifying radiance of God's glory. It partitioned off the holiest of holies from the rest of the temple. It partitioned off God from the people. This veil had that same purpose that the veil Moses wore, to prevent the radiance of God from into the worshipers. Thus, the veil that hid Moses' face has this dual purpose. While it does symbolize a reverence for God, it also signifies a problem that is in need of a solution, this barrier between man and God. We were made as people. We were created for the purpose of knowing God. And sin made us incapable of doing that. So the veil that Moses wore was one that ultimately needed to be taken away. And so something happened at Jesus' death. We're told that the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Like Isaiah said, on this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all people, the shroud that covers the nations. And this prophecy is fulfilled at the moment that Jesus dies on the cross and that veil in the temple, the symbolic barrier between God and people is destroyed. 
on account of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we gain full, unhindered, unveiled access again to God. Finally, thousands of years after Moses was forced to veil himself on their behalf, the people of God could finally look at the face of God in Jesus Christ without fear. And since that point, humankind has actively been in the business of trying to put the veil back on. It's hard to overcome fear. Fear keeps us in the dark because the pain that we know is better than the pain we don't in our own limited mind. Paul says that we place over the veil of God in three specific ways, from secrecy, deception, and shame. When we hide parts of ourself, when we live in secret, in an attempt to only show the good and rosy picture of ourselves, we veil the redeeming work of God in our life. If we don't show our weakness, if we don't show our pain, how can we show that God has redeemed it? Yes, I'm talking about your social media posts. Yes, I'm talking about how we carefully curate our profile so people, the way people see us is just a caricature of who we are instead of showing the full depth because if we showed ourselves fully, it would expose the parts of us that could be judged by others. And oftentimes our faith is one of those parts that we veil because Jesus is scary to people who are perishing. And when a person is drowning, they have a tendency of trying to drag out whoever and whatever they can with them. And so, inexplicably, our fear of being judged by someone who is drowning prevents us from throwing them the life preserver we hold in our hands. And we engage in deception. What is deception? Deception is lying. When we lie, when we engage in deception, we cast the entire gospel into doubt. This one is straightforward. If you lie to me once, how can I trust you? Especially about something as important as faith. When we lie or deceive, we not only discredit the words that we say, but we who speak on behalf of God as representing ourselves as Christians in the world discredit God's word as well. Deception is insidious because it comes easy to us. It is simple to just throw off a white lie without thinking. And oftentimes we can even do it in such a way as we can convince ourselves that we're doing it to protect somebody. We're doing it on behalf of somebody's self-interest. But when we're engaged in deception without thinking, even with good intentions, we cast doubt on the word of God. And finally, the last part is shame. Shame is a byproduct of unconfessed sin. When we internalize the shame that separates us from full relationship with God, this force of shame, we don't often talk about it or think about it, but shame is that thing that tells you that you are unworthy, bad, or wrong. Shame is tied to depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, and a whole other range of mental health conditions from narcissism, where we cover our shame with denial, um, to self-harm, which is quite the opposite, where we can't escape our shame. All of these things, secrecy, deception, and shame, they're symptoms of perishing They're the things that add death, suffering, isolation, hopelessness into our lives. On the other hand, when Paul says, if we set forth the truth plainly, we remove the clouds of lies and deceptions from our lives. We expose the ugly parts of our life and by by doing that, rob them of power. It's scary. It's scary to be honest and in the light. But here's the truth for today. You can never be free while you're hiding. Hiding means we are trapped in a small, dark corner of this world while there is a whole realm of light outside of that limited existence. Living by faith in the light frees us from the veils that we throw over the parts of our life that keep us from relationship with God and relationships with each other. This week, while talking about this, I heard testimonies of the people in our churches. Times where in their daily life, they tried to live out their faith and the blowback that happens from that. 
The institutions and systems of this world are actively and powerfully and aggressively engaged in trying to veil the gospel. The gospel that lives in you and in me. They use the threats of of financial security. They use social pressure. They use fear. They use division. And, our, uh, and uh, as, we, as, as we go through that, if, as we go through this pressure, we have the choice. We can either live in fear and veil ourselves, or we can be willing to reflect the radiance of God, which is going to terrify those who are perishing. When we were crafted from the dust of this earth by God, We received a calling in our life. We received a vocation. For those of you that are graduating, going off to school, you're getting an education so you can get a job and you can call it your vocation, your calling. But we all, every human being that draws God-given breath has a calling from God to be human. We were made to know God, to be able to look into God's face and live This is our calling. This is what God wants from you, from all of us. Anything short of that is perishing. Don't be so worried about the things of this world that we end up living a life that is full of dying instead of full of living. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, Paul says at the beginning of our passage from today, because the spirit of the Lord shows us how blind this world is. And how powerless the chains they try to weigh us down with are. If you don't believe me, look out your window. Do you see a world that is actively perishing more and more day by day? Take off the veil. Take off the veil that prevents you from seeing God moving in the world. God is always redeeming our broken journeys. And that same spirit that was in Jesus is in us. It is never too late to lift our veil. So whether you are graduating or you are sitting at home wondering, well, I, what, what, what more do I have to give to God? Today is the day that God wants to redeem our journeys where we're at because each one of us still has a role to play in the body of Christ. We simply need to step into the light For you graduates that are stepping into adulthood, there's a physical step that you're taking right now. Make it a spiritual step as well. Be ready to experience joy and sacrifice. Be ready to experience encouragement and despair. Because when we reflect the radiance of God in the world and we let God's light shine out of us. The best and the worst of the world are exposed. We see the best of the world and the worst of the world. And God says, redeem it. Redeem the worst and celebrate the best. But we can't do that if we live our life veiled. So today, change course Lift off the veil in your heart and look on the face of God and reflect God's love to the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. We would like to remind those who are participating live that you are invited to share your comments and prayer requests with us. We will be collecting as many as we can to share in our prayers of the community as part of our celebration of communion. As you reflect about this sacrament and the prayers you are lifting up, we would like to share this video with you.
think there's anything better than watching people sing with one with a baby on her hip, right? That is just marvelous, just, oh, reminding us so much of the family of faith. And as a family of faith, on this day, on this first Sunday of the month, we gather together around a table as well. And so you are invited to gather virtually around this table, but also at the table in your home or in the park or wherever you are, engaging in worship with us. As I thought about what Matt was speaking to us about as he was laying bare the word of God for us and our hearts and our souls and thinking about all the things that have transpired in the last couple weeks and months. I think about the holes that we may feel inside of ourselves and we're searching for those to be filled. And this is the table where those holes are filled. But we are reminded that even on the evening that Jesus was gathered around the table with his disciples, this table was a table of sinners. And that's okay because that means we all get to approach this table. This table on the night that Jesus was arrested was filled with people who were still wondering and wandering, people one who would deny him, one who would betray him. And yet he gathers us together around this table so that we might exchange our shame and our deception for the love and the light of God. That we might come and lay down our veil and pick up the love that Jesus Christ has for us, the love that God has for us, the passion that the Holy Spirit has for us so that we might be a beacon of hope. So all are invited to this table of hope and redemption. Jody. Thank you to you at home for sharing with us your joys and concerns. Following each request for prayer, please join us in saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For joys, our, class, our classes of 2020, high school, college, and all levels, Godspeed. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. For Kelly Young and Julie Mills, who are recovering from illness, Lord, Lord hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. For Chuck Collins, um, his scan showed no sign of cancer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For a friend of Paula Stowe and Dave Browning, who has been diagnosed with colon cancer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And now, let us bow our heads together in prayer. Yeah, there's concerns, right? Oh, I think that's all I had. Anita Collins. Oh, was uh-oh. So, um, sorry. Here, I'll just go I have here. it with me. My bad. Um, I know Anita Collins is having surgery this week, a hip replacement, and so we'll hold her in our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. And I know there was another one I had on there. Jan McCaughey. Jan McCaughey uh, her unit tested negative for COVID, so that was good news. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Is that what I had on there? Yeah, okay. I apologize. What? Uh, Bill McConaughey? Oh, Bill's radiation, yes. And the Lord, hear our prayers. This is how you know we're doing it. Like glad. <laughs> Jody Prayton. We love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Let us bow our heads in prayer together. Dear Lord, we join together with you in support of our brothers and sisters in our church community who are experiencing sadness, loneliness, grief, many seeking strength for themselves and for family members who are facing health issues and surgeries. 
And we pray for our brothers and sisters in our communities who have experienced job loss and financial hardship during these difficult times. We pray for victims of injustice and for all who are feeling profound frustration and anger. Please continue to give us the strength and courage to live the change that we seek. We seek your strength to lift one another up, Lord. And dear Lord, we rejoice along with you over the accomplishments of our cherished 2020 graduates. These young people have worked so hard and accomplished so much and have bright futures ahead of them. We are so very proud of them. And Lord, this year's graduates, rather than being out spending time with one another and celebrating, have been faced with a very challenging time which is outside of their control. Lord, bless them for the hope and the resilience they have learned and demonstrated to all of us. Our precious young people have struggled also to make sense of the grief and sadness and injustice, injustices which have captured all of our attention these past weeks and months and beyond. Lord, our young people, our graduates, and their generation as a whole will continue to play a transformative role in helping us as a society do what is needed to right societal wrongs and lead with love above all things, embracing the love and acceptance that you so beautifully model for us and teach us, dear Lord. And now let us join together to say the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Jody. That prayer is beautiful. I found myself wanting to say, Lord, hear our prayer many times as you were sharing those words with us. So thank you. Friends and family, on the night that Jesus was arrested, he took the bread, he blessed and he broke it. And he shared it with his disciples and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And after supper, taking the cup, he gave that also to his disciples. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are truly the gifts of God for all the people of God. May this fill us up. You were invited while listening to Craig Everett to share communion among those that you are gathered with. thoughts today to Martin Luther King and recognize that there are ties between us all men and women living on the earth ties of hope and love of sister and brotherhood and we are bound together in our desire to see the world become a place in which our children can grow free and strong. And we are bound together by the task that stands before us and the road that lies ahead. We are bound, we are bound. There is a feeling like the clenching of a fist. There's a hunger in the center of the chest There is a passage through the darkness and the mist And though the body sleeps, the heart will never rest Shed a little light, oh Lord Dollar bill, 
Thank you, Craig. Beautiful as always. Now let us join together in the communion prayer. O oh God, through this bread and this cup, you have made us one with you and with each other. May the unity we find at this table be a gift that we carry out into your suffering divided world. Help us to find strength in knowing that you, the God of peace, will always be with us. Amen. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> these are one of those days where, yes, you know it's live. Um, we actually worked hard, especially Bill and Leslie and a few others, Quinn, rearranging our sanctuary to make sure that we had plenty of distance between us, uh, many of us who have to speak and sing, and so we are getting used to our new arrangement. So we know that you know that we know that you know that we are trying to do this all together. So we'll break into uh, the who's on first later. Um, so just want to remind you to uh, be checking the website and your emails and mails for all the new things that are coming up. Um, also, uh, this is Communion Sunday, and uh, hopefully our institutional memory, you will remember those little green envelopes we used to have in our bulletins, um, and that was for our deacon's offering. Every Communion Sunday, we would take a special additional offering for our deacons for their work, and they are still working. I know you know that because you're being contacted by them. They are also still working out into the community, and we need to support their efforts. So you can do that by going on the website, easy, click on the give thing, and then find the deacon's offering and give a little extra something there. Um, or you can do it on your mobile app. Oh, so easy, and you just click, click, and you have now helped the deacons to do their work. Um, also, if you want to give a, a gift to the church as we continue to be pushing out into that community with our mission efforts, um, all the work that that committee is doing, please do so there as well. Also, our task group for uh, how we might reopen for gathered worship is also very hard at work, recognizing how complex that actually is. And so we are in the midst of all that work, and we hope to have information out to you soon about when it might be possible for us to socially distance, gather together for worship. So we'll, um, hopefully you'll look forward to that as well. I'm going to invite Matt to come up for the closing of our worship service.
Thank you to all the people, both uh, that have come in front of the camera today and are behind it. Um, Canyon Hills Presbyterian Church is a coalition of volunteers working to make the message of Jesus Christ live in the world. And without this body, without the body of people around me today, um, there's no way that, uh, that, that we have uh, the ability to, to broadcast this message, no way to reach people. So um, thank you to the people that are gathered here. Um, to you that are out there, um, the work of the body is moving forward. Uh, join us. Join in that work that we might be together. Today as we go uh, into our lives, into the world, into our different experiences of God and the Spirit, focus on reconciliation. We worship the Prince of Peace. May the God of Peace be with you, go before you and behind you, be above you and below you at all times. Amen. God hold.